I think we can start the webinar right now. For the newcomers, I would love to introduce myself once again. My name is Irene. I'm a social media manager at Little Extension, and I will be the moderator for this sixth webinar. This time, we are finding out the answer to the question, is mobile returns the future of reverse logistics and why? You might be wondering why, uh, why we chose this topic for the, our webinar this time. So according to studies, 80% of online shoppers are more likely to shop at stores that offer a customer-friendly return policy, which kind of triggers our curiosities on why the number is so huge. Then we've got to know as well as price, product, and other, con other concerns such as delivery costs and timings Return policies are an important factor when customers are deciding on a purchase. Especially in this time of quarantine, people buy everything from home and going to physical stores to return a product seems to be a very tiring task. Therefore, many retail giants like Amazon or Walmart have made mobile return as an important service to focus on. And of course, to bring you a deeper insight into this topic, we have invited Brandon Bachelor, the Director of Sales and Partnerships at Ready Cloud. Brandon, are you there? Oh, hey, Irene, how are you? Uh, I'm great, thank you. How are you? Doing well, doing well, thank you. It's so good to have you here. Can you please give us a little background on yourself, Ready Cloud, and the products you have in the program? Yeah, for sure. Let me uh, let me share my screen here. Okay. So, uh, just to tell you a little bit about the platform, I always think it's really important to understand um, who I am and who Ready Cloud is before diving into it. So Ready Cloud really got started about two decades ago. Uh, we were actually known as TrueShip, and our flagship product was actually Ready Shipper. Now, essentially what happened was that with Ready Shipper, it was just a shipping platform. So we had a ton of valuable information, including things like what was shipped, how it was shipped, um, who shipped it, you know, what was in the box, um, when that item was expected to be delivered, um, if it had, uh, even down to has the label been printed, how has it been delivered, and all of that was stored in the back office with the guy who was in the warehouse who honestly did not care anything about the data. His sole job was really to come in and get all of the orders fulfilled and get them out the door, um, but didn't really care about all of that data and all of the power that it had. Now, from an administrative standpoint, that was really something that was beneficial to them. To be able to see all of that data, how items were shipped, how many items were shipped, how long did that order come in before it was shipped, so that's really where ReadyCloud came from. And what ReadyCloud is known as today is a, a full suite. And that full suite really breaks down into three different platforms. Uh, the first platform being Ready Shipper, as I mentioned, our shipping solution. The second being Ready Cloud, which is our CRM solution. And then the third, which we'll cover a lot today, being Ready Returns, and that's our return solution. Now, um, when we became Ready Cloud, we kind of had one vision. And that vision was to deliver a hybrid cloud suite of solutions that gave you the ability to get fa to have faster fulfillment, to have customer-friendly returns, and operational visibility into the life cycle of that order. Now that we have some background on you and the company, tell us what your thoughts are around reverse logistics and why you feel it is the future of e-commerce. For sure. So. At ReadyCloud, we felt this was important once we saw that there was a paradigm shift. And really, with that paradigm shift, what we saw was many customers started to expect a lot from their at-home experience. So during the paradigm shift, we actually saw a big shift from retail to e-commerce. And when e-commerce really started to pick up, 
a lot's changed, especially over the past year as e-commerce jumped five years ahead of where it was projected to be. So um, we put a little sheet together for you just to kind of give you a vis visualization. But as you can see here, um, e-commerce in 2021 is actually five years ahead, so a full 60 months ahead due to the global de pandemic. Now, customers, they still expect a brick-and-mortar service levels while the merchants have tried to navigate through and keep up. The consumers expect quick delivery, easy returns, and efficient communication. The merchant has been tasked with handling these expectations set by Amazon. Now going to uh, the next slide here, you'll actually see that when the shift started, the merchant actually realized that online returns were much higher than retail returns, which is a trend that continues to date. As you see, still about 30% of all e-commerce returns come back compared to about 9% of retail. Due to this, merchants wanted to make online returns as difficult as possible. I mean, I think to really elaborate on this, what we're seeing here is merchants just saw a ton of items that typically didn't come back um, with the retail items that are now coming back as more and more people shift to e-commerce. And what we've actually seen is a ton of these retail locations have actually been forced um, into e-commerce even when they weren't expecting to be. All of these retail shops really were forced to do so just due to the pandemic. Going to the next slide here, I want to quickly touch on what the consumer, consumers are expecting. And those expectations really go and drive home the point of why uh, mobile returns really are the future of reverse logistics. So when you think about the consumer, they do have those expectations of the retail store. And they've honestly become accustomed to them. So when you think about e-commerce in general, they're expecting to essentially be able to try things on, check them out, touch them, fill them. Um, and all of those things are, are senses that are lost when these items are getting delivered because you're basing everything off the of picture. So those consumer demands get higher and higher every day as they get more comfortable with shopping online and the expectations of being able to return those products. Now, from a consumer standpoint, they really want to be able to return them for free. So looking at some of the stats on the page, we know that 92% of consumers actually want to make a mobile return versus 81% want an easy returns process for their mobile device, and 82% want to actually shop at a store that makes returns difficult. And merchants really started to see this. I mean, we can look at a number of statistics here that I've laid out on the page, even down to 67% of shoppers will view the returns page before making a decision, which really goes into the abandoned cart rate. Um, and that stat actually comes from the UPS pulse of an online buyer to where they showed that 67% of consumers would go in and actually add items to their cart, go check out that returns page, and then abandon their cart if they didn't like what they saw. Um, having something like an Amazon returns process on that page really allows that customer to feel confident that if they do check out and that shirt's too big or that shoe's too small, they'll have the ability to come back and return those items without any need, um, excuse me, without any friction there. So. Going into some of the things that the merchants actually realized was many of the things that I just mentioned. So merchants slowly started to realize that if they made those returns hard, then at the end of the day, they would have a much lower return rate. But that was at the sacrifice of a higher conversion rate. When merchants started to dive into the data, there was quite a bit that you actually saw here. So for example, your return policy influences 80% of all sales. When you really think about that, that's a huge number. So is making return difficult to drive down those overall returns volumes worth actually never making the sale in general? And what we actually know is still, based off of a couple of slides back, that 60% of all items aren't actually returned. So if you don't ever make the sale, then you're really hurting yourself there. Um, so going on to some of the other stats is that half of all shoppers are now expected to buy on mobile. 
and shoppers are expecting to be able to return items in the same form that shoppers bought items. So as we continue to see e-commerce shift more and more to mobile, um, to some of those portable devices like an iPad, like smartphones, we're starting to have those customer expectations give the ability or need the ability to return on those same items that they actually purchased from, which is why I really think that, once again, reverse logistics and the ease of returning on the mobile device is huge. If you don't have the ability to return the same way that somebody bought, um, then you're really losing the customer's interest there because those customers are going to need to visit your website, make future purchases all through that device. So just to break a few things down, it's also not always the fault of the consumer. You know, as I mentioned earlier, consumers do miss that retail experience of being able to touch an item, to fill an item, to really understand what, how an item is going to fit based off of a picture of somebody that maybe isn't shaped like you. Maybe they're, they're taller. Um, or shorter, or something along those lines, and you don't always know exactly what that item is going to look like on you. But there's also things on the merchant's end. Like the merchant's not perfect. They'll ship the wrong item sometimes. There will be a difference in a product appearance. Um, or the item's actually damaged as it's put through the, the mail system. Um, no matter what mail system that is, things happen, things get dropped, things get broke. So being able to make that overall experience really simple is really important to the consumer because at the end of the day, just because they're returning it doesn't mean that it's something that was their fault. Um, and really, this is where giving those customers an easy way to return through a mobile device has been a huge topic of importance. And when you're actually adding something to your website, you're also driving customers back to the website where they have the ability to make an additional purchase there. And we'll get into some of those stats on that here in just a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you, Brandon, for some very useful information. Now that we have discussed why returns are important and some different aspects of the shift from retail to e-commerce, could you speak to how ready returns makes it easier for merchants to handle their mobile return strategy? For sure. So when you think of ready returns at its core, um, we're really just adding an Amazon-like returns experience to the pages of virtually any website. And the reason that that's important is because we can still make the returns policy whatever you would like. We're showing them something familiar. The customer isn't coming there and seeing a wall of text. They're not saying, okay, well, if I want to send this back, I've got to you know, go to the post office, get a label, um, send it back, et cetera. They're seeing something that they're familiar with, something very similar to Amazon, where you go back, you select your items, you choose that you want to send it back, they give you a label, you take it, you drop it off, and that experience is ultimately done. Um, it's a very, very simple experience. Is something that honestly Amazon has set the expectations for. So, um, to take a step back, when it was actually first first released, Ready Returns was not something that the merchants was really a fan of. They didn't want to make this easy on the customers, as mentioned previously. But as competition increased, especially in the e-commerce realm, what they realized that if they actually limited their returns, then they were going to, um, or excuse me, made their returns process more difficult, then they were actually going to have to put time and resources into those processes. So what I mean by that is if you have to email into customer service, well, now you have to use those resources for those customer service reps to actually do things like send an email back, get photos, um, understand what the process is. Um, and all of those, as they add up and as e-commerce companies continue to get bigger, it really becomes uh, an increase in overhead, which is not something that any e-commerce platform likes to do. So um, when you think about the fact of 50% of all e-commerce is now being done on mobile, this explains why mobile returns truly are the future of reverse logistics. Um, 
customers who buy on mobile want to return on mobile. And we know that many across the world do not even have a computer. Um, everything from schoolwork to business is being moved more and more to things like tablets with the ability to connect to things like Bluetooth devices, which is why it's really important and beneficial to the customer. Now, with a mobile return system like Ready Returns, it also tackles one of the number one issues that many e-tailers face today, getting traffic back to the website. So when you place a returns portal on your website, which is optimized for mobile, it makes the customer come back to see what is new and what sales are currently happening. We know that when a customer is actually driven back to the website to place these returns or to track them, then we're actually going to see an increase of second, second chance sales um, by up to 44% there. And all of this is the same no matter if it's a domestic um, or an international return. Um, ready returns can be used for that to drive those customers back to the website um, to track those returns as well um, as actually reprint their shipping label or their packing slip, um, anything along those lines. That's awesome, Brandon. So you recently implemented direct to mobile. Can you explain what this feature does and how it benefits the retailer and their customers? For sure. Yeah, this is something we're really excited about. Um, so I think that this is, is really the next step of all merchants um, and, and the ability to really give those consumers exactly what they want. You know, so when you think about uh, mobile returns, in many aspects, people think that they just want the ability to actually produce a label um, on a mobile phone. But what it really comes down to is people don't have printers um, in many situations. So now you get into the aspect of, all right, great, we've made this really simple, we can give the customers their returns label, and you think you've done everything right, and now the next thing that merchants have to face comes up. So what merchants are then doing is they're kind of back in the same boat. They're adding another friction point to their returns process and making these customers have to go in, um, either go to maybe a parent's house or go to work or something like that and print off their actual labels. So this is where QR codes really come into play. As mentioned a couple of times now, all of, more than half of purchases are now made on mobile advice, uh, devices. And with merchants needing to keep up with the times, this is exactly what they're expecting to see. It's very similar to the Amazon process for those that are similar to it. You, in many cases, don't print that label off anymore. You simply take your phone, you take the QR code, you take it to a UPS store, you show it to them, they scan it, they print the label off for you, they put the label in the, uh, the little adhesive slip there and put it right onto the package. So it's a really great benefit and something extra that can go the extra mile for your customers. This is something that, you know, as I mentioned, we're extremely excited about. Um, depending on your shopping cart, we have the abilities of actually taking the, the convenience fee charge that you can charge your customers um, right out of that return. Specifically, that's big commerce and, and Shopify or Shopify Plus, um, depending on if it's store credit or refunds. But I've also seen different merchants use that convenience fee um, to actually upcharge the customer a little bit. Maybe it's something to where they're making a dollar or two on that QR code. And that really gets the merchants excited because now those items that are going out and coming back, um, maybe it's something to where they can break even on it a little bit more. So it's not a complete loss and it softens the blow a little when those items do come back to their warehouse. Um, everything that goes into a shipment being out um, is now becoming a little bit more of an even playing field. Um, but in conclusion, e-commerce and the expectations around it are evolving. And it is on the merchant to keep up as it does. When customers have an incredible returns experience, like using a QR code on their mobile device, they expect all of the places that they shop online to get on board 
or it could affect the relationship of that customer moving forward. And if it's a bad returns experience, in many cases, with the increase of um, with the increase of competition for e-commerce platforms, it could easily lead to those customers just going and shopping somewhere else. So while mobile returns are the future of e-commerce, it will greatly benefit all involved, saving the merchant's time and resources and ensuring the customer has the best experience possible, getting them to come back to that shop time and time again. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing, Brandon. Thank you so much for such useful sharing. I personally learned a lot from your presentation. Now, are you ready to move to the Q&A part? Uh, I think so. Let's see what you got for me. Excellent. So our viewers have sent us a bunch of questions. I will pick some of them to read out and address right in our live stream. And because we are running out of time, Brandon cannot answer all of your questions during the live stream. But don't worry, the rest will be answered right in the comment box. So you can type in your questions even after the live stream. Okay, first question for Brandon. Do you foresee merchants continue to bend or do you feel it will reach a breaking point? Oh, great question. Um, so I do. I do actually see that merchants will continue to bend um, for the foreseeable future. And really the reason that I see that is because at the end of the day, the merchants can't survive without the shoppers. So if somebody makes something popular, especially something like Amazon that everybody's familiar with, um, then the merchants are going to have to evolve to be able to give the customers the same kind of experience that they ex expect, or the customers are going to eventually go to and shop from all of the websites that are giving them very easy returns, a great experience. You know, maybe that uh, the ability to, to try clothes on at home and then in return them back if they don't fit. Maybe that's just an expectation there. Um, you've seen a lot of companies that have actually done that. They're expecting to send out two or three sizes of an item and get you know two of those three items back. Um, so I think we haven't reached the peak yet, but at the same time, I, I don't know how much further it can really go um, without the merchants having to go and, and actually build in some additional cost there with those ex expectations. Um, so maybe the customers will, or the merchants, excuse me, will bend a little bit more, um, but I think that, that you'll see the, the pricing uh, on the items going up a little bit to equate for that. Awesome. Uh, so your second question, you discussed a lot items customer expect, including free return shipping. How do merchants handle the costs associated with that? Yeah, so really with the, the cost associated with that, it was kind of as I just mentioned. Um, the, we're starting to see a trend in e-commerce already to where many merchants are offering free return shipping, um, or in many cases you'll see you know free shipping at a certain price point. And really all that is is the merchants know that at that point, there's going to make enough margin there to be able to, to give the customer you know, that, that free shipping. Um, I think you're going to see the merchants continuing to be able to factor things in like the um, return shipping cost. So I think you're just going to see the, the price of your average item going up by a few dollars um, in anticipation that those items may come back, especially you know, based off of industries. I think that industries like shoes and apparel, um, or I guess more specifically it would be footwear in general, not just shoes, um, those are really going to start to to tack on some, a couple of extra fees there uh, or a couple extra dollars there just to, uh, just to make sure that they can offer free shipping because everybody else is going to and they have to keep up. Okay. Uh, moving on to the third question. Many customers look to exchange items as opposed to refund, which can cause inventory issues. How do you suggest e-retailer handle that? 
Oh, great question. Um, so really, we've seen a strong push um, to go from exchanges to doing store credit. Um, and this was actually led by Amazon. So when you think of Amazon, if you go back to Amazon and you try to return an item, you have two options. You have the option to get a refund, or you have the option to um, actually get essentially a store credit. They'll put it into your Amazon account. Um, a lot of this has to do with the fact that customers may come and, and get a label, um, or they may come and get a QR code. But what the customers, um, ha or what happens sometimes is the customers don't always return that item. So in many situations, what you see is you're thinking a customer is going to exchange a size medium for a size small, so you're having to hold that uh, small inventory. And then what we actually see is that customer decides, uh, you know what, it fits okay, or um, you know, summer's coming, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose a little bit of weight, so it'll fit then, and then they never actually send it back. From the merchant side, now they missed on all of the opportunities of everybody else who's visited your, their website to be able to sell that item. Um, so maybe they just forget to put it back into inventory. It, can, it definitely can cause some inventory issues there. Um, what we've seen and what we've really concentrated on is putting those items or turning those exchanges into store credit. It's actually really beneficial, especially depending on the shopping cart. With something like you know, Shopify Plus, for example, you can give customers store credit as soon as they produce that label to be able to actually go back in and shop at that point in time. Um, so then, before a customer, in, in many cases, even puts the item back in the mail, then they can actually have another item being shipped out to them. Um, we also have additional options. So you can put it in and do it on carrier acceptance scan. So now you don't have to take the risk of the customer keeping it. You know it's in the hands of the shipping carrier. Um, and then at that point, you can go ahead and send out that customer's exchanged item. Um, so with that, I think that it's really beneficial for the merchant to not have inventory issues, and the customer actually gets a new item before, uh, and the customer actually gets a new item before the old item even arrives back at the warehouse. It's really a win-win for everybody. Okay, thank you. Um, I think our webinar is a bit long, so we can just answer one more question. And this one is about Ready Cloud. So if we would like to discuss this further and see if we are a good fit, how should we contact you? Yeah, so I actually meant to show you this slide a few moments ago. But um, here is myself and one of my team members here. Uh, there's an email address. There's a direct line. Um, I would love to hear feedback of what you thought on the demo. Um, you know, tell me that it was great and you learned something, or maybe ask an additional question, or maybe suggest another topic, um, or if you thought it was horrible. You know, tell me that as well. I um, I always welcome the feedback and and really hope that uh, that you'll have me on again. I hope that this was insightful for everybody. Yeah, that's cool, Brendan. Um, to our viewers, if you want to contact Brandon and his team, you can just take a screen capture of this slide so that you can contact him later. Okay, thank you so much, Brandon, for some detailed answer in the Q&A part. Uh, I think we have answered quite a good a number of questions and our webinar is going to an end. So do you have anything you want to say to the audience? Uh, no, just uh, thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, big thank you to Lit Extension um, for putting this together. And um, hopefully we can do another one sometime soon. Yeah, perfect. Thank, thank you, Brandon, for joining us today. If we have chance, I truly hope that we can have um, next webinar together on another topic that our audience uh, are what I, I is interested about. So uh, I want to say something to the audience. 
Okay, um, all of the questions for Brandon that we haven't bought, brought up in this live stream will be answered in the comment box. So don't, don't worry, you can leave the question at any time, even after the live stream. And if you have any requests regarding the next webinar topic, please let us know by commenting down below. And uh, last but not least, I would love to thank the audience for joining us today and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye, Brandon. Thank you. Bye-bye.